okay so yes i also like to tell you about my session yeah hello can you hear me everyone is it okay now students okay so yes can you hear me now yeah so yes now we will uh, start the session okay so now the voice issue is resolved resolved is it okay yeah so we will start the session now and uh, yeah so yes it's okay so just now i told you about my uh, un unlock code that is anat 10 and about myself and this is the session part 9th of the anatomy mcq session so now starting with the session so actually the sessions which is coming up is the 7:30 time is for the neat pg let's crack neat pg session is the 7:30 time and uh, for the fmg session it's yeah it's okay now it's it's 9 pm time is the fmg session time and conceptual anatomy session time is 6 pm time okay conceptual anatomy timing is 6 pm so these are the details of the sessions as you can see here these are the details of the session this is let's crack fmg session 2021 this is conceptual anatomy session now I would like to start with the first MCQ. Everyone are you ready? Let's start with the first MCQ. All together 10 MCQs for today's session. So yes, let's start with the uh, session now. Yeah. Okay. So parasympathetic fibers from ninth cranial nerve synapses in which ganglion before traveling to parotid gland. So four options are there. Otic ganglion ciliary ganglion, submandibular or pterygopalatine ganglion. So what is your answer? Everyone? Okay. So yes, uh, mark the correct answer and then I will come up with the explanation of this MCQ. Parasympathetic fibers from ninth cranial nerve synapses in which of the following ganglion? A, B, C and D. So any, uh, so please mark your answer. Okay, welcome Sharans, uh, Pratik, Sharans, uh, Pratik, Sharans, okay, yeah. So anyone, any answers which you feel, otherwise I will only explain it. So yes, the correct answer here is, so yes, I got an answer D, okay, one of the student has given me the answer D. So parasympathetic fibers of ninth cranial nerve, actually the correct answer is, a otic ganglion okay so here how we can approach the correct answer because parotid gland uh, innovation parasympathetic fibers which is innovating for the parotid gland has been asked so parotid gland innovation the correct answer will be uh, the fibers are passing via otic ganglion okay so let me show you this diagram which will make you better understand this here you can see this is the whole outline of the parotid gland which you are seeing okay and the fibers as you can see uh, the preganglionic fibers are arising from inferior salivary nucleus yes otic otic so i got an answer otics also very nice so the preganglionic fibers are arising from inferior salivary nucleus as you can see and then it is passing via glossopharyngeal nerve tympanic branch and then the fibers via tympanic branch and it's a petrosal nerve is relaying so you can directly see in this diagram it's relaying in which ganglion otic ganglion and from here it's playing in the otic ganglion and from here the post ganglionic fibers will arise the post ganglionic fibers will arise and will innovate via auriculotemporal nerve the parotid gland so it will innovate which gland parotid gland as shown in the diagram okay so this whole diagram is explaining you so this whole diagram is explaining you the whole uh, pathway of parasympathetic innovation which is you can say secretomotor fibers to parotid gland and which is via otic ganglion 
okay so i would like also to give you a flow chart of this which will help you more so let me show you this flow chart so yes this is the flow chart and here you can appreciate starting from the first uh, pre ganglionic fibers are starting from inferior salivary nucleus okay then from here the fibers along with the glossopharyngeal reaching via tympanic plex and branches via lesser petrosal nerve and the fibers relaying so this is the relay point in the otic ganglion post ganglionic fibers arise and via auricular temporal nerve it will innervate the parotid gland parotid gland is forming major chunk of salivary secretion which is poured in our oral mouth via the molar tooth the duct will uh, of this parotid gland will open in the upper molar tooth so got it can we move on to the next mcq everyone so let's uh, move on to the next mcq question number second okay so let's move on to the question number second okay so uh, moving to the question number second a a patient present to emergency department the patient presents to the emergency department with weak wrist extension okay so with weak wrist extension is there on physical examination sensation of arm and sensory sensations are arm is intact the affected nerve most likely is to injured on which of the following location whether it is scapular tunnel hook of hamet surgical neck of humerus head of radius or coraco brachialis muscle okay question number second so mark your answer patient present to emergency department weak wrist extension sensations are intact and you have to give the right answer whether it is a b c d or e five options are there so yes take your time it's a clinical based uh, mcqs it's a clinical and uh, anatomy mcqs okay so i got kumaran is telling it's d okay kumaran is telling it's d pratik shahu is also telling it's d okay pratik is also telling it's d what about others okay so i got two answers and both of them are telling it's d okay so few students are telling it's d okay the correct answer here is let's uh, so i would uh, proceed with the explanation now the correct answer here is head of radius d is absolutely correct okay so i will explain you actually in this mcq i will explain you the correct option that is d that is head of radius why it is the correct answer and also the incorrect options i will explain now yes uh, so sarans acharya is also telling it's d the points which will help you to approach to the correct answer and the facts which is mentioned in this mcq is that weak wrist extension that means wrist extension is involved means radial nerve is involved the other point which is um, giving you the answer is the sensation of arm is intact the sensation is not involved now let me um, tell you about the first uh, uh, correct answer now this is a case of radial head subluxation which is also called as yes absolutely right fazel gohar absolutely right so this is a case of radial head subluxation which is also called as nurse made knee and it's a common injury which is seen in children it results from a sudden so you you must have seen uh, the some of the elderly person and care givers care takers uh, who has taking care of the children they have a wrong practice of just uh, picking the babies and the children from their uh, palm and just swinging them around like this swinging them around what will happen when it happens it's sudden at times there can happen that the head of uh, radius is pulled out from the annular ligament and this condition is called as nurse made knee or head subluxation radial head subluxation so if radial head subluxation occurs it can lead to uh, it can lead to affection of or involvement of radial nerve so if radial nerve is involved and injured then extensor compartment muscle will be in involved and this will lead to wrist drop now 
why the sensation in this mcq it was also mentioned that the sensation is intact so uh, the sensation or innervation is intact in this condition because the deep branch of radial head is uh, radial head is not providing any sensory innervation so deep branch is involved yes pulled elbow absolutely right uh, sarans and there is no involvement of superficial or the cutaneous branches now coming to the next option the one of the option was here one of the option which was mentioned was carpal tunnel syndrome one of the option was carpal tunnel syndrome now my dear friends we already know when the carpal tunnel syndrome is there the nerve which is involved is median nerve so which nerve is involved median nerve is involved and the reason is that in our hand here lies the flexor retaniculum and beneath flexor retaniculum which is also called as transverse carpal ligament the structure which is passing is the median nerve so at times when there is more pressure built below the flexor retaniculum with uh, certain conditions the conditions or the reasons i have written the reasons are arthritic changes in the wrist there can be colis fracture there can be fracture of lunate myxedema acromy acromegaly edema uh, obesity and pregnancy so uh, edema obesity pregnancy these are certain physiological changes also where fluid is formed or it increase in the carpal tunnel and this is the reason the nerve is compressed median nerve and what will be the resultant the resultant will be the patient will complain of pain tingles numbness sensation in the radial 3 and half of the affected hand so this is the uh, resultant which is seen okay so yes carpal tunnel yeah so carpal tunnel is not the answer clearly we are seeing now the other option was hook of hamet other option was hook of hamet so when we talk about hook of hamet so just below the hook of hamet uh, there lies a space that is called as gyons canal so exactly at this level of gyons canal the nerve which is uh, injured is ulnar nerve so option b can't be the right answer because ulnar nerve is not involved if ulnar nerve is involved the presentation of the patient will be this sthesia means loss of slightly uh, ir ir irregular anesthesia on the ulnar side sensation will be gone and the muscle which is paralyzed is the muscles of hand so that is the intrinsic muscles of the hand will be involved so this was not the presentation of case in the uh, in the mcq which has been presented now what about uh, so surgical neck of humerus my dear friends you must be already knowing that surgical neck of humerus is closely related to which nerve which nerve it is closely related to axillary nerve so if axillary nerve is involved what will be the resultant the muscle which is basically paralyzed is which muscle you must be knowing it is the deltoid muscle which is paralyzed and if deltoid muscle is paralyzed there will be loss of abduction and in the patient there was no loss of abduction but there was involvement of loss of extension movement not the abduction so this can't be the correct answer so this option is also incorrect okay this option is also incorrect yes fazal gore absolutely right moving to the next option one of the option was coraco brachialis muscle okay so i uh, so this coraco brachialis muscle is the muscle of anterior aspect of the arm okay anterior aspect of the arm is the coraco brachialis muscle and what is the nerve supply of coraco brachialis muscle is the musculo cutaneous nerve musculo cutaneous nerve so actually musculo cutaneous nerve is the muscle it's the muscle of anterior aspect of arm and all the muscles of anterior aspect of arm is involved uh, and it uh, and then the muscles which will paralyzed or affected will be biceps brachii coraco brachialis okay and brachialis part of brachialis also so this can't be the correct answer because any flexor or adduction movement of eye, uh, of the arm was not involved what was the muscle uh, action lost was extension so this is the reason it can't be the answer okay yeah uh, so you are talking about yes ag yes uh, saran sacharya is absolutely right if axillary nerve is involved then sensation over the upper lateral aspect of arm is gone and it is called as regimental batch area yes uh, saran sacharya you are absolutely right so yes can we move on to the next mcq mcq number 6 uh, third one sorry mcq number third okay so yes moving on to the third mcq now okay 
so retro memory space is located between which of the following retro memory space is located between which of the following a skin and areola pectoralis major and minor breast and deep pectoral fascia suspensory ligament and skin lactiferous sinus and nipple so yes according to you which is the correct answer question number c So yes, uh, five options are there. So mark the correct answer. Actually, this is a direct uh, MCQ of anatomy. You have to know exactly uh, which area is mentioned as retro mammary space. So direct MCQ. So yes, I am getting answers, and the answers which is coming up is C. Okay. So um, Saran Sachare is telling C. Kumaran is telling C, and uh, Mandal is also telling it C. Okay. What about the uh, uh, 077? Okay. Pooja, P is telling C. Okay. So, yes. Uh, so, yes. So, what about the correct answer then? The correct answer is, the correct answer is C. Absolutely right. Most of you are absolutely right. And the correct answer is C. That is breast and deep pectoral fascia. So, uh, uh, the area which is lying between the breast and deep pectoral fascia is designated to be retro mammary space and this uh, retro mammary space is filled with which structure anyone? It is filled with loose areolar tissue which is separating breast from the pectoralis major muscle. So, what is that means? Uh, this has got an uh, anatomical importance uh, I want to explain you that breast is a modified sweat gland lying in the superficial fascia not directly adherent to the pectoralis muscle okay it's not directly adherent in between the pectoral fascia and the breast mammary gland there is a space and that uh, space is containing loose areolar tissues that is providing that space is providing mobility to the mammary gland what is the clinical importance of this actually this is the site where breast implantation is done because it is away from the major nerves and structures which is supporting the breast so this is uh, this is the site where this site is often utilized for putting breast implants okay in certain cases of cancers mammary uh, breast cancer we have to remove that uh, uh, breast gland so we put artificial uh, breast there okay so let me just show you this diagram where you can clearly see the retro mammary space so yes now here uh, students uh, here what you can see here this uh, the area which i am highlighting with green color this is the area of retro mammary space okay this is the area of retro mammary space and you can clearly visualize the exact location is between the breast and the pectoralis muscle fascia so yes let me use a pectoralis muscle fascia with blue color so this is the pectoralis muscle fascia pectoral fascia which you are seeing okay this is the pectoralis major muscle overlying by the fascia and uh, just anterior to it you can see here just anterior to the space the structure lying is the mammary gland so in between mammary gland and that of pectoral fascia the space which is highlighted in green color is the retro mammary space this is which space this is retro mammary space as clear in this diagram okay okay yes so retro mammary space retro mammary space is containing loose areolar tissue which separates loose areolar tissue separating breast from pectoralis major muscle from pectoralis major muscle and this is the area where breast implantation is done breast implantation is done this is the site which is utilized for breast implantation now moving on to the next mcq that is mcq number fourth everyone can we move on to the next mcq Yeah, question number four. Okay, 
so yes mark your correct answer true statement regarding red pulp of the spleen so am uh, 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 among a b and c d which is the correct answer which is the true statement regarding red pulp of the spleen whether it is a perisinusoidal macrophages b periarterial lymphatic sheath b cell containing lymphoid follicles or none of the above so yes all of you mark your answers and then i will come up with the explanation okay true statement or true regarding red pulp of the spleen true statement whether it is a b c or d yeah mark your answers okay so yes acharya is telling it's b periarterial lymphatic sheath periarterial lymphatic sheath okay b what about others try try so kumaran is also telling b but with a question mark okay yeah okay so yes what about others anyone else so otherwise i will explain the answer true statement regarding red pulp of the spleen so this is an mcq regarding histology so actually red pulp when i am talking about red pulp so yes gopika is telling gopika sharma is telling it's a so yes gopika you are absolutely right gopika is absolutely right and the correct answer is a true statement uh, so red pulp is containing peri sinusoidal macrophages all other structures b and c is contained in white pulp these two structures are contained in white pulp b lymphocytes and that of peri arterial lymphatic sheath lymphoid follicles basically the mcq was containing lymphoid follicle so let me just enlarge this diagram and help you to understand so yeah is the diagram clear to you yeah yeah so this is the histological image of spleen so the histological image which you are seeing here is the is the spleen which is shown to you this is a slide of spleen so i would like to explain the histology because few of you have made mistake so can you see this bluish structure which is in the form of nodule okay these are so many is are uh, so many are here as you can see here okay so these are here one more is here so see here okay one more is here so what is that these are all white pulp which is containing lymphatic aggregation so in case of white pulp when we are talking about the slide of spleen when we are talking about histology of spleen there is white pulp and red pulp white pulp is made of lymphocyte aggregation which is called as lymphatic nodule and if you will uh, clearly see in this lymphatic nodule if you will see there is one central artery so see here this is the central artery here also central artery here also central artery here also central artery so my dear friends you must be wondering why it is called as central artery because the location of the central artery is if this is central artery what you can see here the location of this central artery is eccentric but the location is eccentric why because the artery is not lying exactly in the center but it is eccentric in location see here it is exactly not in the center but it is towards the periphery so i will give you the reason what happens the outermost covering if you talk about outermost covering of the spleen here this is the fibrous capsule okay from the fibrous capsule what is going inside here is the trabeculae so what is traversing inside this is t4 trabeculae what is it these are 
the trabeculase which is going inside and dividing this is the trabeculase which is going inside and dividing the interior of the spleen it is dividing the interior of the spleen in red pulp white pulp and through this trabeculae actually splenic artery traverses its branch one is trabecular artery when it reaches inside the lymphatic aggregation it is called as central artery now when it is reaching inside the uh, initial part of lymphatic uh, collection it is called a central artery but meanwhile what happens aggregation of lymphocyte around the central artery aggregation of lymphocyte around the central artery is accumulating and it is pushing the central artery towards the periphery so it will push it towards the periphery so because of that it is pushed towards the periphery and it becomes eccentric in nature so in case of histology of the spleen slide the basic point of identification of the slide of spleen the characteristic point of identification is we have to look for the eccentric location of central artery and when we get a lymphatic nodule which is having a central artery located in eccentric position this is the characteristic point for uh, the slide of spleen and the lymphatic follicles which is surrounding exactly the central artery that is called as pulse what is the full form of pulse pulse is called as peri arterial lymphatic sheath what is called as pulse peri arterial lymphatic sheath and it is mainly consists of t lymphocytes okay what does the pulse contains all of you pulse contains t lymphocyte what it contains it contains t lymphocyte got it and the area which is a uh, around it can you see here the rest area is called as the red pulp and the red pulp is containing actually capillaries a discontinuous capillary which is called as sinusoids what is it called as sinusoid along with it it also contains uh, macrophages and plasma cells so we have got macrophages plasma cells all present in the red pulp so let me just show you once more so i will write this detail also don't worry here also what you can appreciate here also what you can appreciate these are all lymphatic nodules can you see here these are all lymphatic nodules this is a diagram which is taken from d furey's uh, uh, histology atlas and here it is nicely it you can just appreciate exactly the location of central artery is towards periphery and it is eccentric my dear friends and also in the center the lighter stain structure can you see here this is lighter stained here these are lighter stain and these centers are called as germinal center why in the lymphatic nodule this germinal centers are lighter my dear friends it is lighter because the lymphocytes are immature okay so they are less dense in the periphery they become more mature and they are densely located there so they are dense in color so also i want to show you the area which is a uh, uh, which is uh, here is the trabeculase as you can see these are all trabeculase this is the fibrous capsule these are the trabeculase trabeculae so through it traverses the central artery and the position of central artery is pushed towards the periphery because of the presence of pulse what is pulse peri arterial lymphatic sheath which is contained in the white pulp and it contains T lymphocyte rest area which you are seeing which is consist of venous sinuses and splenic cord of red pulp these all areas which you are seeing these all areas are of red pulp when we cut the slide of spleen freshly it is appearing redish areas that is all the area of red pulp yes gopika sharma absolutely right so let me tell you the details i will come to the next m uh, next mcq but before that i just want to give you the details is it okay okay so let me give you the details of uh, the histology part of spleen okay coming to that okay so write down everyone histology of spleen because few of you have made mistakes so let me just uh, give you a brief a quick revision is always important so my dear friends white pulp contains lymphatic nodule in this lymphatic nodule there lies a central artery the central artery is eccentric in position surrounded by what is it it is surrounded by which structure it is surrounded by it is surrounded by pulse what is pulse what is pulse pulse is peri arterial lymphatic sheath it is peri arterial lymphatic sheath 
it is peri arterial lymphatic sheath and what does peri arterial lymphatic sheath contains it contains t lymphocyte peri arterial lymphatic sheath contains mainly t lymphocytes it contains t lymphocyte it contains t lymphocyte okay so this is about the uh, his, uh, histological aspect of white pulp okay and peripheral part of the white pulp will contain b lymphocyte so it will have mixture of b and t so most of it will be peripheral part will have b lymphocyte okay the center of lymphatic nodule will have gc what is gc germinal center and germinal center is containing immature lymphocyte what it contains it contains immature lymphocytes so i think this is uh, this is uh, this is about the histology of the white pulp of the spleen so after that i would like to move on to the red pulp so more details about the red pulp so let's move on with the red pulp of the spleen so write down important features of the red pulp of the spleen so when we are talking about red pulp red pulp of the spleen is consist of discontinuous d i s it is discontinuous capillaries and the discontinuity of the capillaries is not only in the endothelium but uh, it is also having discontinuity into basement membrane and this kind of capillary is called as cyanocytes which is highly permeable which is highly permeable that means these cyanocytes are highly permeable and in case of spleen it is called as splenic cyanocytes so there is splenic venous cyanocytes are lying there and along with it there is supporting network of rf what is rf reticular fibers it is having reticular fibers it is having macrophages it is having macrophages it is also having plasma cells so all these structures are seen in the red pulp so that is the correct is it okay everyone have you understood in brief about the histology of spleen actually this feature uh, which is having the macrophages reticular fibers and the splenic venous cyanocytes okay so i just want to tell one more thing uh yeah one more thing i just want to explain about this okay just one more thing which i came in my mind that i should also uh, make it clear okay so see here so actually i want to explain one uh, one feature is splenic cord of billroth one of the feature is splenic cord of billroth okay this splenic cord of billroth is also present in red pulp red pulp so actually what happens uh, what is splenic cord of billroth there is discontinuity so the correct answer is peri sinusoidal macrophages no doubt about this this is present in red pulp i want to uh, explain the feature of splenic cord of billroth mm, okay so like when you will see the like this this is uh, this is spindle shape this is spindle shape okay there will be spindle shape or you can say barrel shape splenic cyanocytes okay so it is like splenic cyanocytes are like this it is barrel shaped okay it is all barrel shaped like this this are like uh, discontinuous it is having discontinuous endothelium and all like it is in the shape of this so this uh, barrel shaped uh, splenic cord is again having a reticular fibers surrounded it so inside there will be so these are what these are reticular fibers these are reticular fibers and this is splenic cyanocyte this is splenic cyanocyte now this whole appearance where is splenic cyanocyte is covered by a reticular fiber this whole appearance if you will see it is looking like a barrel okay barrel like for example barrel shaped in which uh, it's a wooden casket where in which wine beers and all are fermented the shape is like this so in in book of ross histology witter's histology it is explained that this barrel shaped structure lying in the red pulp of the spleen having reticular fibers surrounding as a network of fibers containing inside macrophages and all this is given a definite term and what is that term it is called it is called as splenic cord of billroth 
it is called as splenic cord of Billroth and in high power view and also in case of electron microscopy we can directly see this structure which is called as splenic cord of Billroth. So is it okay have everyone understood the histology of spleen can we move on to the next MCQ? Got it everyone let us move on to the next the, uh, so much much details we have seen about the histology part so let us move on to the next MCQ. Okay, so MCQ number fifth. Okay, so yes, question number fifth, which of the following structure is avascular? Which of the following structure is avascular? Which of, sorry, which of the following structure is avascular? Why the, uh, whether it is A, superior ileocecal fold, B, inferior ileocecal fold, meso appendix, appendix cecum. So yes. Mark the correct answer, whichever you feel is correct, you just mark it, nothing to worry whether it is right or wrong, you just uh, mark it. So yes, waiting for answers, students, which is the correct one dear? 5 ka answer A, okay. So, I got Kumaran is telling it is A, okay. Uh, superior ileocecal fold. What about others? What about others? So, yes, I got A as the answer. What about others? Or uh, I will come up with explanation now. The correct answer here is Okay, so can I explain now? Is it okay? The correct answer is B. Okay, the correct answer is B. That is inferior ileocecal fold. Inferior ileocecal fold is not containing blood. Okay, it is avascular, no blood supply. It is avascular fold which is seen in relation to the um, uh, cecum and that of uh, ileum. In that fold, there is no blood and it is called as bloodless fold of trivis. What is the name given to it? It is called as bloodless fold of trivis. All other option which is given here, that is appendix, cecum, superior ileocecal fold, all is having a proper blood supply. Okay, so actually appendix and cecum, no doubt, uh, uh, cecum is having arterial blood supply from from anterior posterior cecal arteries appendix is supplied by appendicular arteries meso appendix is the peritoneum uh, fold which is covering the appendix and it is also having arterial supply now let me show you one diagram here okay so in this diagram what you can appreciate so we are seeing the uh, cecum and appendix both and i want to show you the fold that is inferior ileocecal fold so this is the fold which you are seeing this is the inferior ileocecal fold this fold this fold which you are seeing is the inferior ileocecal fold and this fold is called as bloodless fold of trivis. When you are seeing the superior ileocecal fold, so let me use another color uh, for it so that you can highlight here. So can you see here, this is superior ileocecal fold. So this is superior ileocecal fold and superior ileocecal fold is having a good blood supply my dear friends as you can see in the diagram. Here an artery is traversing through superior ileocecal fold. What is this artery? Anterior ileocolic artery. Anterior ileocolic artery. So the main doubt was these two only. You must have got doubt from uh, these two uh, uh, um, uh, these two options only. Yeah, Deoxy, welcome to the session, dear. So inferior ileocecal fold, you can see no artery is traversing. So inferior ileocecal fold is avascular and this is also called as bloodless fold of trivis. This is also called as bloodless fold of trivis. A particular name is given bloodless fold of trivis because no uh, blood supply is there, arterial supply. And in superior ileocecal fold, there is anterior ileocecal artery. So yes, let's move on to the next. This was a direct MCQ. Only let's move on to the next MCQ. That is MCQ number 6th. Okay, before that, just a uh, just a, a brief about the platform of Unacademy and few more upcoming sessions I want to tell you. The upcoming sessions, you can use my referral code and add 10 for unlocking the free sessions and also for taking the subscription of Unacademy. So if you take the subscription of one, three months Unacademy, you can get an additional one month absolutely free. 
I would like to tell you about the upcoming sessions which is coming up. So for any of the session, you can utilize my code and add 10 for taking 10% discount. So MBBS Foundation second year batch is going on. You can be the part of this session taken by the educators, top educators of an academy platform. Also the third year foundation batch is going on third professional. You can be the part of this session by using this code and add 10. Also, you can be the part of target next 2022 batch. Very important for you to crack your uh, upcoming examination and building your concepts. I have taken and covered anatomy in this. I have covered the anatomy in this. So you can take this session also. Again, you can utilize this code and add 10 for 10% 10 discount. Uh, image sessions, image sessions is uh, is the session on the unacademy platform which has st uh, started just now and you can get image based mcqs practice revision of all 19 subjects so you can be uh, the part of this plus subscription you have to uh, take the plus subscription again you can use my code and add 10 for 10 percent discount so this code can be used by you for 10 percent discount 34,000 mcqs are on the platform of unacademy so uh, just take the Benefit of solving all these MCQs, download the Unacademy app for those who are new to the platform, just download the Unacademy app, mark your goal as neat PG and then uh, use this code and add 10 and you can take the subscription whichever suits you either 3 months, 6 months, 1 year, 2, 3 years or 1 month, whichever suits you. You can, uh, you can take the iconic subscription or the neat PG uh, Unacademy subscription and you can get 10% discount by using this code. So yes, that's enough. Let's move on to the next MCQ that is MCQ number 6. Okay, so let's move on to the next MCQ that is MCQ number 6. Yeah. <clears throat> so question number 6, a patient is drinking hot tea at a restaurant. So this is again clinical based anatomy MCQ. Hot tea at a restaurant experience a burning sensation at the tip of the tongue. This sensation is transmitted by which of the following nerve? Whether it is trisaminal, coda tympani, glossopharyngeal, hypoglossal or vagus. So which is your uh, the correct answer? Yeah, good evening Abdul Salam. Yeah, which is the correct answer according to you? Mark the correct answers. Five options are there. Okay, so yes. Okay, so I got Acharya telling A as the correct answer. What about others? Acharya is telling it's A. Okay, what about others? Okay, so I got uh, Akshit Bhatt is telling strizaminal nerve and Karthik Arwal is telling it's D hypoglossal nerve. Okay, so yes, mixed bundle of answers are coming up. Lingual branch, Gopika Sarma is telling A and she is also giving the explanation of the answer. D Kumaran is also telling D but a, with a question mark means that he is not sure about it. D is motor bro, yeah, yeah, Acharya is absolutely right. The hint is that sensation is lost, not the motor. So D can't be the answer because it's a motor branch. Yes, Acharya. Uh, yeah. So actually the correct answer is A. So those who have given the A is absolutely correct. And tip of the tongue comes in the anterior aspect of the tongue. The tip of the tongue, the sensation which is lost or a burning sensation is uh, field at the tip of the tongue in the patient. And this is because of the involvement of lingual nerve. Why lingual nerve? Lingual nerve is a general sensation nerve for the anterior part of the tongue. In the posterior part of the tongue, uh, we have got glossopharyngeal and posterior most part of the tongue, we have got epiglottis along with the uh, uh, means uh, vagus nerve, which is supplying epiglottis along with the posterior most part of the tongue. If we talk about special taste sensation in anterior part, that is from coda tympanic nerve. So let me just show you this diagram. Okay, so in this diagram, if you will see the innovation, what you can see, all the muscles means motor supply. If I talk about motor supply, all the muscles is supplied by 12th cranial nerve except palatoglossus. As you can see, palatoglossus is supplied by 10th cranial nerve, vagus nerve carrying the fibers of accessory. 
and here anterior part of the tongue special taste sensation when we are talking about special taste sensation it is coda tympanic nerve it's the coda tympanic nerve for special taste sensation and general taste sensation if we caught about general uh, sensation not the taste it is lingual nerve branch of mandibular nerve branch of trizaminal nerve so lingual nerve is a branch of mandibular nerve and mandibular nerve is a branch of trizaminal nerve that is fifth cranial nerve so this is the correct answer when you see the posterior part of the tongue the innervation is glossopharyngeal nerve both the Glossopharyngeal nerve both for its general and special taste sensation and posterior most part tongue by internal laryngeal nerve on the posterior most part of the tongue along with the part of epiglottis. Okay, actually internal laryngeal nerve is a branch of vagus nerve and bitter sensation. Okay, bitter taste sensation. So actually the other name of internal laryngeal nerve it is also called as beer's nerve. It is also called as beer nerve. Why? Because the taste of beer we feel in the posterior most part of the tongue. So internal laryngeal nerve. So it is also called as Beer's nerve. Yeah, absolutely right. So many of the students are giving the answer. Thank you so much. Okay, very nice. And I want to show you one more diagram where it you can clearly see that hypoglossal nerve is providing innovation to the muscles of tongue. So all the muscles of the tongue, as you can see, it's getting branch and innovation from hypoglossal nerve, except the platoglossus, which is not supplied. So I think it is clear to you everyone most of you are knowing this only because the location was mentioned in the MCQ it was a clinical question but location was mentioned. So those who are knowing the innervation of tongue they can clearly mark the correct answer. So let's move on to the next MCQ everyone can we go for the next one yeah so let's move on to the next one that is 7th MCQ. Okay. Yeah, so mark the correct answer. So yes, mark the correct answer. Question number 7, which is a branch, which is a branch of brachial artery, whether it is A, anterior, posterior, circumflex, humeral artery, whether it is B, deltoid artery, whether it is C, superior, inferior, ulnar, collateral artery or whether it is D, thoracoacromial artery or E, anterior, posterior, ulnar, recurrent artery. So yes, uh, mark the correct answer. So yes, I am getting A as the answer. What about others? What about others? Harish VP is telling it's A. Harish VP is telling it's A. Harish VP is telling it's A. Uh, Acharya is also telling it's A. Anterior and posterior circumflex humeral artery, branch of brachial artery. So, okay, Harish VP is telling now E, okay. So, what about others? Kumaran is telling 7A, anterior posterior circumflex. Hari, okay. <laughs> so, let me see who have marked it right. So, I am waiting for few more uh, options. Pooja is telling it's E, okay. So, mixed bundle of answers are coming up. Core is telling it's D. Core is telling it's D. Gopika is telling D with a question mark. Akshit, but A is from third part of axillary artery. I am asking the branch of brachial artery. Okay. Yes, Akshit, but you are right. Anterior posterior circumflex humeral artery is a branch from third part of axillary artery. So, means brachial artery branches everyone has forgotten not remembering brachial artery branches it was a direct mcq e so till now i haven't found any correct answer the correct answer is c my dear friends the correct answer of question number seven is c c is the correct answer superior and inferior ulnar collateral artery is a direct branch from brachial artery 
it's a direct branch of brachial artery i will show you the diagram and explain you don't worry c is the correct answer okay what about others i will let you explain so see here this was the uh, uh, options which were given okay this was the options which were given yes jyoti you have right it's the as right answer is c so see here so let come up with the uh, with the uh, answer here okay so anterior posterior circumflex humeral artery these are the branches of which artery anterior posterior circumflex humeral this is the branch of third part of axillary artery okay third part of axillary artery deltoid artery is a branch of which artery deltoid artery is a branch of profunda brachii artery profunda brachii artery itself is a branch of brachial artery but deltoid is a direct branch of profunda brachii artery okay superior inferior ulnar collateral artery these are the branch directly from the brachial artery thoraco acromial artery is again a branch from second part of axillary artery it's a branch from second part of axillary artery anterior posterior ulnar recurrent artery anterior posterior ulnar recurrent artery is the branch of ulnar artery and ulnar artery itself is a terminal branch of brachial artery so all the options okay all the options and i have given the branches of each component okay so now uh, let's move on to the explanation by seeing this diagram so let me just take this is an uh, diagram of gray's anatomy which will help you to understand the branches now see here so here what you can see this is the brachial artery what was asked was about brachial artery so this is the brachial artery okay direct branches my dear friends can you appreciate this is superior and this is inferior ulnar artery so this is brachial artery this is the brachial artery see here this is the brachial artery so this is the brachial artery so direct branch which is arising from this uh, brachial artery one is the superior and the other branch is the inferior ulnar artery so here you can see directly these superior and inferior ulnar artery is directly arising from brachial artery is directly arising from the brachial artery is it clear from this uh, diagram the other direct branch is the profunda brachii artery this is also profunda brachii artery but to show you it's the branches it is shown like this it is uh, it's uh, the profunda brachii artery is also a direct branch and you can see radial and ulnar arteries these are the terminal branches of brachial artery so radial and ulnar arteries radial and ulnar arteries these two arteries are terminal branch of brachial artery terminal branch so now you can approach to the right answer that these are not the branches of uh, other uh, other arteries which were mentioned was not the branches of brachial artery directly also you can see ulnar recurrent artery posterior ulnar recurrent also ulnar recurrent arteries all these are branches of ulnar artery now uh, the many of the branches were given there and uh, one of the let me explain the branches of axillary artery for you actually axillary artery is divided into three parts by which muscle pectoralis minor muscle the part of artery which is lying above pectoralis minor muscle is the first part okay the part of the artery which is lying behind the pectoralis minor muscle is the second part and the part of axillary artery which is lying below pectoralis minor muscle is the third part now you can appreciate uh, actually this is the subclavian artery and this subclavian artery at the level of first rib beyond the level of first rib changes its name to axillary artery subclavian artery is a artery of neck and when the subclavian artery reaches the axillary region at the level of first rib outer border it is changing its name to axillary artery so we have got one branch from the first part and the name of that branch this is superior or supreme thoracic artery it is the branch from the first part of axillary artery two branches from the second part two branches from the second part and from the second part we have got two branches one is thoracoacromial artery and the other is lateral thoracic artery so these two are the branches from the second part of axillary artery now coming to the branches from the third part three branches from the third part three branches from the third part that is posterior circumflex humeral anterior circumflex humeral and that of subscapular so these 
one, two, and three. These three branches are the branches from third part of axillary artery. So everyone clear? Everyone are clear? Any doubt? So and one of the branch was deltoid. That was a branch from profunda brachii artery. So I think this is clear to you. Can we move on to the next MCQ? Everyone, can we move on to the next MCQ? That is MCQ number eight. Okay. Okay. So let's move on to the eighth number MCQ. All of the following are branches of external carotid artery supplying nasal septum except question number eight. Mark the correct answer. Four options are there. A. Sphenopalatine artery. B. Anterior ethmoidal artery. C. Superior labial artery. D. Greater palatine artery. So, okay, I am getting B, B, Gopika Sharma has given B, what about others? C, superior labile, Kumaran is telling B, few are telling B, few are telling C. Yeah, very nice. Gopika is giving the explanation also. Yeah, the correct answer here is, the correct answer is B, anterior ethmoidal artery. Anterior ethmoidal artery is not a branch of external carotid artery. It's a branch of internal carotid artery. Anterior ethmoidal artery is a branch of ophthalmic artery and ophthalmic artery is a branch of internal carotid artery. Rest all sphenopalatine, superior labile, greater palatine artery are the branches of external carotid artery. So I would like to give you uh, the list of the branches also. Don't worry about it. So the options are, so what were the options given? The options was sphenopalatine artery. Sphenopalatine artery is a branch of maxillary artery and maxillary artery is a branch of external carotid artery. Greater palatine artery. Greater palatine artery is also a branch of descending palatine artery and descending palatine artery is a branch of maxillary artery and maxillary artery is a branch of external carotid artery uh, Sivan it's from Armed Force Medical College Pune AFMC Pune Armed Force Medical College Pune I have studied from there so yes okay Sivan okay so this is done now let's move on to the next so what was the other option that was superior labile artery superior labile artery so superior labile artery is a branch of facial artery and this facial artery is a branch of which artery facial artery is a branch of again external carotid artery what was the other option superior labile we have done then the other option was anterior ethmoidal artery anterior ethmoidal artery anterior ethmoidal artery is a branch of it's a branch of ophthalmic artery ophthalmic artery is a branch of internal carotid artery okay so see here all the options we have uh, written here sphenopalatine artery maxillary artery branch of external carotid artery greater palatine branch of descending palatine branch of maxillary artery and ultimately branch of external carotid artery superior labile artery branch of facial artery and branch of external carotid artery anterior ethmoidal artery branch of ophthalmic artery and branch of internal carotid artery so only anterior ethmoidal artery is the correct answer so yes now see here this is a diagram if you will see here this is the diagram and in this diagram you can see these uh, branch of sphenopalatine anterior ethmoidal septal branch superior labile and branch of greater palatine all of these arteries are 
uh, are forming an anastomotic network at the littles area in the nasal septum antero inferior aspect and the antero inferior aspect of nasal septum that area is called as littles area forming casal back area as shown with the orange color that is a nose bleeding site. Yes, Sivank, yes, Sivank, it's like that. Yes, if you study from uh, uh, a armed force medical college, you have to serve uh, your country or you can uh, uh, you can uh, pay out. Okay, so there is a bound uh, money that uh, at my time it was less. It was just 5 lakhs and uh, then now the bond money has increased to I think 30, 40 lakhs and all. So you have to pay out if you not uh, wish to do uh, work as an army officer. So you, uh, you can just um, join FMC and work after doing your PG you will become a major. Okay. So got it? Yeah. Got it everyone? In my case my eyesight was a problem so I was not able to become major there. My eyesight was problem so I have to opt out. Got it? But uh, yeah, really I wish everyone should compete your entrance exam and have get a seat in our Armed Force Medical College. Yeah, so we will concentrate on this uh, uh, MCQs now. Yes, uh, uh, we will concentrate on this MCQs. No, I didn't pay out. I didn't pay out. So let's concentrate on this. All of all related information about uh, anatomy and about anything about competitive how to get seat in different colleges and all. All of you can join me Mona Lisa anatomy Mona Lisa anatomy actually the thing is that all students are there and their time is important. So if uh, we will uh, uh, okay so if we will be there so Mona Lisa anatomy is the my telegram group. So you can join there and you can ask your doubts Mona Lisa anatomy is my telegram group okay. So you can join and you can ask your doubts there got it. But everything which I have gained in my knowledge I am uh, thankful to my teachers of uh, Armed Force Medical College they have just uh, given me their knowledge and I am passing my knowledge and uh, every day I am learning from you all okay. So that is the thing. Okay, thank you. So yes, we have done with this. I also want to show you an another diagram where you can appreciate the branches of external carotid artery. You can appreciate the branches of external carotid artery. So see here, this is a diagram showing branches of external carotid artery. Got it? external carotid artery. So the branches are superficial, temporal, maxillary, posterior, auricular, occipital, facial, lingual, ascending pharyngeal and superior thyroid. Okay. So in this case, superficial, temporal and maxillary are terminal branches of external carotid artery. Posterior, auricular and occipital are posterior branches of external carotid artery. Facial, lingual and superior thyroid. A I have will write A means these are anterior branch of these are anterior branch of external carotid artery they are anterior branch of external carotid artery and only one branch which is the medial branch of external carotid artery and that artery is ascending pharyngeal artery which is the medial branch of external carotid artery. So got it everyone can we move on to the next MCQ? Let's move on to the next MCQ that is MCQ number 9. So two more MCQs are there. So let us complete it. Which of the following muscle is not properly matched with its action? So I think most of you should mark it right. If you remember my previous session, I have already explained the action of extraocular muscles. Okay, which of the following muscle is not matched? This is a match the following kind of MCQ. So you just match it rightly, which is not matched correctly. Question number 9. <clears throat> Question number 9, please mark it. Okay, which is the correct answer? Gopika D okay D so Gopika is telling D okay what about others okay what about others D 
D. Okay, so Kumaran is telling D, Dev, Sony, Sivang, D, Gopika, D. Okay, so yes. Great. So the correct answer is, yes, absolutely right, D. Why? Because superior oblique muscle is causing abduction, not adduction, elevation, not depression and rotate the eyeball. It is rotating it internally, in torsion. Okay. So uh, all the action is absolutely wrongly mentioned here. So this is incorrect. All other is absolutely correct. Yes, we know that lateral rectus is causing abduction. So this is absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yes. Superior rectus elevates, adducts and rotates. It is absolutely right. Inferior rectus action is also absolutely right that it is depressor, adductor and uh, rotating the eyeball laterally. Inferior oblique is absolutely right. Abduct, elevates and rotate the eyeball laterally actually these are the three planes in which different movements of eyeball occurs that is actually when we talk about adduction and abduction okay adduction and abduction so that is occurring along vertical axis if we talk about uh, uh, elevation and depression it is along horizontal axis if we talk about internal and external rotated means rotation of eyeball is occurring either internally or externally or laterally so that occurs along ap axis antero posterior axis so three axis of movement are there so yes so uh, everyone we have already done but i have included this those who want to revise those who want to revise they can revise the action of uh, of all extraocular muscles so this is very useful you can just click the photo of this and take it as a screenshot it will be easy for you to remember take uh, so yes this is showing medial rectus primary action there is primary secondary and tertiary lateral rectus superior rectus inferior rectus superior oblique inferior oblique so we have already had a discussion of all the action of extraocular muscles i have already briefed you and here you can see superior oblique muscle is causing intorsion depression and abduction so all the list of primary, secondary and tertiary action has been listed there. So I think this will be useful for you, those who want to revise. Okay. Everyone, is it okay? Can we move on to the next? So can I move on to the next MCQ? MCQ number 10. This is the last MCQ for today's session. Question number 10. 10th one. Yeah, question number 10. So yeah. Yes, which is which is a suprahyoid muscle? Which of the following is a suprahyoid muscle? Which of the following is a suprahyoid muscle? Whether it is mylohyoid, sternohyoid, omohyoid, sternothyroid or thyrohyoid. Which of the following is a suprahyoid muscle? Mylohyoid, sternohyoid, omohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid. So Akshit Bhatt is telling it's omohyoid. Okay. Suprahyoid. I am asking suprahyoid. 10 C. C is omohyoid. Uh, Gopika Sarma is telling A, mylohyoid. So I am getting mixed answers. Okay. Akshit Bhatt is now telling Mylohyoid. Okay. Kumaran 10A question mark. Not sure but it's uh, he's, he seems to be 10A is the correct. So mixed bundle of answers. So let me explain this answer. Actually the correct answer is A Mylohyoid. Rest all muscle that is sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid and omohyoid. These are infrahyoid muscles. This list of muscles are infrahyoid muscles. So actually I will show you a diagram by which you will uh, see hyoid is a bone above which the muscle is suprahyoid below it is the muscle is infrahyoid. So you can just see the diagram and you can understand. So see here, here I have shown you all the suprahyoid muscle. So this diagram is showing you the list of suprahyoid muscle. Suprahyoid muscle. Suprahyoid muscle. So it is mylohyoid, it is uh, digastric stylohyoid, okay. These are all suprahyoid muscle and also geniohyoid and one more is there that is geniohyoid. This is also geniohyoid is also suprahyoid muscle. 
So all these muscles are suprahyoid. I would like to show you the diagram of infrahyoid. So yes, if you will see infrahyoid, it is thyrohyoid. Omohyoid, both superior belly and inferior belly and sternohyoid, also sternothyroid which is not shown. One more is sternothyroid, sternothyroid. This is also infrahyoid muscle. This is also infrahyoid muscle. Got it? So in brief, I would like to tell you about the innervation of all these muscles. Okay, in brief and then we will end for today's session. So let me just write the in brief about the innervation of these muscles. So write down suprahyoid muscle because MCQ in the previous year has come about innervation of these muscles. So suprahyoid muscle is following we have got digastric muscle. So digastric muscle is, is, is having anterior belly and it is having posterior belly. Posterior belly is getting innervation from facial nerve, anterior belly from mandibular division of trisaminal nerve. So mandibular nerve. And this was the first. Now talking about stylohyoid muscle. Stylohyoid muscle is getting innervation from facial nerve. Geniohyoid muscle is getting innervation from geniohyoid muscle is getting innervation from cervical first first cervical nerve which is passing via hypoglossal nerve which is passing via hypoglossal nerve absolutely right akshit but infrahyoid by the ansa cervicalis but not all i will also tell it uh, there so mylohyoid what about mylohyoid what is the innovation of mylohyoid mylohyoid is by mylohyoid nerve Okay, mylohyoid is by mylohyoid nerve which is again a branch of mandibular nerve and which is again a branch of trisaminal nerve. So this is the innovation of, this is the innovation of suprahyoid muscle. This is the, about the innovation of suprahyoid muscle. Okay, now moving with the innovation of infrahyoid muscle. Okay, so write down infrahyoid muscle innovation. So yes, uh, Gopika is absolutely right, Akshit, uh, uh, Akshit Bhatt is absolutely right, infrahyoid muscle. So when we are talking about infrahyoid muscles, all infrahyoid muscle is getting innovation from, all infrahyoid muscles is getting innovation from ansa cervicalis which is a nerve loop lying on the anterior sheath of carotid sheath except which muscle except thyrohyoid and thyrohyoid is getting innovation from C1 first cervical nerve via passing via hypoglossal nerve via hypoglossal nerve which is passing via hypoglossal nerve. So yes is it okay everyone is it clear to everyone? So geniohyoid is suprahyoid. Thyrohyoid is infrahyoid. Okay. So yes, done everyone. Now before ending the session, I would like to give you a brief of my upcoming sessions. Okay. Just a giving you a brief. My live free sessions, which is on the Unacademy platform, special sessions. You can use the code and add 10 for unlocking free sessions on the Unacademy. Schedule of the month, this month, the sessions which I am taking, 7.30 is the timing given to, uh, uh, 7.30 is the timing for uh, NEET PG, Let's Crack NEET PG 2021, 9pm is the timing for FMG session, Let's Crack FMG 2021, okay, and Conceptual Anatomy, which is especially for the students appearing for next examination, uh, 22 or 23, they have got enough time and also for first year MBBS students. So they can join me for conceptual anatomy sessions. Referral code for unlocking the free sessions on an academy is, is an ad 10. Okay, thank you Kumaran. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And about my session. So tomorrow session will be the 23rd month. The tomorrow is the 10th session altogether. 15 sessions I have planned for this month for Let's Crack Neat PG. So tomorrow is the 10th session. 
FMG session just now from 9 p.m. I am uh, starting this session for uh, the FMG aspirants 2021. Okay, and uh, for conceptual anatomy session, the timing is 6 p.m. Okay, so those who wish to take the plus subscription of Unacademy or those who want to unlock free sessions on the Unacademy, they can use my referral code and add 10. All the best, keep studying. Thank you so much. We will meet again at the same timing that is 7.30. Okay, everyone. Thank you. So, I am just going to end the session. Thanks.